real talk. And, and, and the thing is, you know how some stories, they don't materialize until you like get with the other right narrator and then you could like talk. Like I can't yeah. talk to people. People don't, hey, you don't, you don't fucking know Amy Winehouse. You know what I mean? This is some new stuff I'm working on. And she was just like, bomb, 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 bomb. And you know, I'm just listening. I'm just like, yo. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. God damn it. Welcome to the Keller Dome. We're pointing to you live, central London or central as you need to be. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, everybody's got the Keller Vision app on a free download. iPhone, Android, you know the dilly. If you haven't got enough street culture in your life, then you've got a problem and there's no one else can help. And perhaps you can find them, then you can come and find us. We have a very special guest, Bad Man, hailing out of uh, Copenhagen. No, Stockholm. Oh, my God. Yes. Stockholm, that's right. Hey, hey, they tried to get me on that one. Big shout out, Tony Sauter inside the place. Versatility MC. Come on, let's let's have it for you, son. How are you, man? I'm very well, man. And, and I, 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 I got to say one shout out, Natalie, for sure, for bringing us together all day. Uh, yeah. Shout out Def Fresse for, for just reaching out to her and finding out, just staying on the on the pulse of the, of the culture, man. It's crazy, man. It's so well, crazy. It's so crazy. Big shout out to Nathy each and every time. Big shout out to Will, all the crew. There's just so many levels uh, when being introduced to some. And I think this this is where we're reciprocating here is often we think in our world of, like you say, the hip hop culture, the street culture, you think that you know everybody. And then when you're connecting with someone all of a sudden, you're just like, yeah, how come we've never fucking met before? <laughs> It's so crazy, man. Uh, it seems that you've had you've had some a lot of legwork that you've done with with uh, the hip hop community in Stockholm or in Sweden, correct? For sure. I saw your name on a lot of their blogs, and they have your blogs linked up in there. Uh, your podcast linked up in podcast SE and everything. And so, um, one, that's crazy. Two, I watched uh, actually the first episode I saw of yours, which blew my mind because. I'm like, I have a couple, I got some some little roots in the UK and then they haven't like expanded. And now just through through Matt, through Natalie, and now you, the shit like is it's on fleet. Hey. It's, it's so crazy. The gentleman, I'm, I'm his name slips me, but he it was a very recent episode. Is his name Corey or or oh uh, no, Corey Johnson? He killed it, bro. Producer and and um, from Jamaican guy, entrepreneur, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, yes. Him, he he, he brought up deal reels, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he brought up deal reel, and he brought up um, like like that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. flashback, flashback, summer 2005. I come to uh, Ronnie Scott's and to uh, Jazz Cafe with Leela James touring with her. I'd done all the background vocals on her album. They fired some background vocalists, asked me to roll with them. I'm like, sure, come there. Now, boom, I'm going to meet Amy Winehouse for the first time because I did like three background vocals on her Frank album. So hold on, breaks, meet- breaks, breaks. You're blowing my mind, bro. That's mad. OK, carry on. as was <laughs> real talk. And, and, and the thing is, you know how some stories, they don't materialize until you like get with the other right narrator and then you could like talk like I can't yeah. talk to people people don't hey, you don't you don't fucking know Amy Winehouse okay first of all Amy met me at Ronnie Scott's and took me straight to uh this pub that she was the, near uh, I'm trying to think uh Camden she lived in Camden and she had a flat there and it was some that's pub right. like around the corner that's we right went there I had like all of these I was like she was breaking down like uh she was breaking down uh, what is it? It's, it's ale. Ale hey, and yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. So I had some ales. <laughs> and then uh, uh, then I had, what did I have? Did I have, 
I'm vegan now, but I have blood and kidney pie, I think. Is that what it's called? Oh, steak and kidney pie. Steak and kidney yeah. pie at this, at this, at this uh little pub. And uh she was like, it's the best here. Da, da, da. We went on the tube. People were like, hi, she had on her pumps. Then we went back to her flat, blazed it up, and she's playing stuff on guitar to me, like singing stuff. And oh no, no, she took me by deal real. I met Tony Tago. Oh, hold and, tight, Tony. Woo! Okay, and then uh, it was just like all really, really, this is one afternoon, man. Go back to her flat. She's playing guitar, singing. This Some of the stuff she was singing, I didn't know at the time, and I didn't remember it, but it had to be some black, back to black shit. Mm, mm. You know what I mean? This is some new stuff I'm working on, and she was just like, bomb, 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 bomb. And, you know, I'm just listening. I'm just like, yo, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You're just like, like, you're just like this like, wow. is this is not a basic day. This is yeah, yeah. So <laughs> then she's like, she's like, she's like, baby, I, I have some things to do. I'm gonna take you back to the tube, da, 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 and maybe we can hook up a little bit later. And I was like, great, great. I was just like, holy shit. And I, I was leaving, coming through King's Cross, going back to where I was staying, right? That next day, that's when that shit got bombed. Summer 2000. No way. Facts. <gasps> and Commissioner Gordon and the people, they was worried that I was hanging out with her. Just, they was just worried. He was like, y'all yeah. behave yourself. Yeah, like, yeah. he knows me, he knows her. And he was just like, y'all yeah, behave yeah. yourself. You know, and then it, and then we left UK and then we went to uh, North Sea Jazz Festival and other things. But like, dude, that was crazy. Next the week, ladies and gentlemen, we... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just nailed that shit so hard. I've never heard. I've never heard that. I've never heard that have ever happened. Parading around Camden. Camden was her, was her haunt of haunts. That's where she used to hang. So, as soon as you said that, I said, "Yo, you know this story's about to get legit." <laughs> Duke, that okay. So let's call that branch one. Oh no, that's oh, branch one. Oh, shit. branch two. I had a residency at Joe's Pub in New York. Big up eclectic ride, all of my homies there, see Black Forest, all of them. Yeah. And I meet Ty in New York. Oh shit. This has to be uh, 2003, somewhere between 2001 and 2004, somewhere in between there. Right. So I meet him there. And we just, you know, I was performing and we just hit it off and then we, we exchanged math and the whole thing. Uh-huh. Fly into 2007, or maybe even eight, when he's doing uh, some kind of fool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he calls me. He's like, "Yo, I got three joints. I need you on. When can you come to London?" I'm like, "Okay, when? Let's go." When he brings me to London, we go in the studio. I lay down these three joints. It's all credited. I'm featured on these three joints. Man. I get to see his work ethic. I get to be with him. I meet his manager. I'm forgetting his manager's name at the, at the, at the, at this moment, but, um, and he takes me to a spot for hot doubles. I don't know the name of the place, but I had oh, never had yeah. hot doubles. That shit, that shit blew my mind. I was like, wow. <laughs> then, um, uh, we're like going, we're rapping all around and we're walking around. Uh, and, and I'm like, Man, it's a, I have a feeling Electric Avenue is somewhere around here, man. He's like, you're on it. <laughs> and I looked up, I was like, holy shit. And I was like, yo, Eddie Grant, Eddie Grant. Like, I was like, damn. Do you know, like, like Satna, like, Satna, like, Satna don't really get down like that back then. So, like, to, to suddenly have this energy where you're just like, I think we're close. That Real was talk. Just... I was like, man, he was like, you're on it. And I was like, oh, shit, really? And I was just like, damn. And then, you know, we go back to his flat because I'm staying with him during this time. So, um, and rest in peace, Ty, because I, I didn't even chime in. You know, a lot of people chime in when people pass and they like try to promote themselves and do all this type of stuff. And it's just like, I was just like, I was saddened by a I, I, I new dude. I stayed in his, in his home. Uh, I cleaned up his home. I was like, I, I didn't know he, he had, um, uh, he had to take shots in his stomach. I was like, wow. And he was just like telling me about all of this. And um, yeah, man, I I, I helped. I, I mean, I like I said, it, it was just crazy, man. And then to see like how hungry and how humble 
and his work ethic, and he's just a beast and the yeah, production and everything, man. And um, yeah, that that saddened me, man, very much. But those two people are my like seedlings, roots in in uh, in London, and it's crazy now. Matt Def Press it, and it's so crazy, dude. Yeah. Yeah, because I actually can't really talk to that many people about the shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. And I kind of feel it. It's it's almost like this probably would have gone down in you know, gone down with the ship. People, you, you wouldn't have had a good reason to talk about this, you know, and, and until you'd got onto like a UK podcast and kind of elaborated on the story. Because Camden, okay, it's a tourist destination, but you know, and so is Electric Avenue. But when you put it in context of these two, you know, pillars in in the, the music industry because they really they really are like there's very few people that walk it how they talk it and have a, a, a demeanor that kind of people's response to them is like key to the city you were totally rocking with the, with two of the greatest if, and 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 i felt that and we had like mutual naughtiness man here's the thing yeah. we have mutual naughtiness like uh yeah, it was just crazy, man. It was crazy. give me some Gelder breaks. Give me some Thai naughtiness. Give me some Thai naughtiness. Well, he he just gave me the look because he sort of had pushed like just different things, you know, to the wayside. He didn't. Yeah. But he gave me the look and it just like just yeah, telling me you. like how he used to drink or this or that. But like um he was like he was just a wellspring of like because I was interested, then he just opened opened up all of the local shit. Yeah. If I was just coming in, like, saying, okay, on the strength of the music, we will get in the studio mm -hmm. and burn it down and do that, we would have just done that. Mm -hmm. But then, like I said, it turned into uh, lifestyles of Ty in... <laughs> in his on, on his stomping ground and all of the spots and recommendations and just you know, man yo that is those are what you know what that you know what that is right like there's there's young man touring and then there's grown man touring right grown man touring is when you are totally and utterly beyond you know it's, it's not that you're not grateful when you're younger but what it is is that when you've been sent over somewhere um with someone else's credit card and you're landing there and you're there for one, for one reason only you all of a sudden it's like you totally and utterly appreciate every step, everything. And you just want to invest time in making um, good use of it, of, of where you are and the food, the culture, the, the delicacies of the local area and shit like that. Isn't it? It's crazy. And to date, I have been to London three times. The third time, I could shout out Tony T because he held me down and took care of me. But the reason why I was coming to this was on the strength of a wild cookie gig that didn't happen right. because my partner uh, couldn't make it sort of at the last minute. And I didn't like to perform our, our duo music as soloists because, you know, people be like, oh, you did it solo. And then, you know, then that opens up another thing. So yeah. I just kept it like, nah, I'm not doing no wild cookie stuff. I toasted a little bit. And I was walking around the club and then it was crazy. But mm -hmm. the third time, like I said, I shouted out my man, but that's three trips, man. Amy, yeah. I, and the unknown, my G. So let's, because you sound very well-traveled. You do, you sound like you've, you've, you've really covered some ground and there's, there's, there's more than meets this first, chapter of conversation and obviously we're uh, you know i'm being introduced at a particular time as as some of the audiences are you know like big up all the regulars um you know if you know you know but let's take it somewhere where whereby we get a real understanding of you as a character because you're not just an mc you're not just a songwriter you're there's a lot of uh, there seems to be like it's been a well thought through um this is what I embody. This is my thing, and I'm, I really like to get into the, you know, into the the the, the roots of, of of where your journey has taken you. Okay, I appreciate that, man. Okay, let's start it like this: 1972, Akron, Ohio. Right, I'm born, March 21st. 
uh, my mother, a single mom, me and my sister, my my biological father at the time is is in jail, which where he stayed for the next maybe ten years. My mom remarries. My stepdad raises me. Okay, gotcha. shout out, brother Joe Williams. But anyway, uh, from that, I had this, I had this separation and a break in, uh, you know, like. My my biological side father uh, uh, this, that side of the family is all from Louisiana, so this is like a very strong like Creole voodoo like for real, and so I think the universe sort of let that skip my generation in practice, yeah, because I probably would be a totally different person if I was like really raised. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, on some whole other shit, which, yeah. these, which this energy, which I still have these, these, these uh, unknown sort of things, but they haven't been um, nurtured or, or no kindling has been added to that. So I just have what I have based on that. And then it's surprising to some of my family members from that side, how much I am like, even though I'm not raised by, by my dad. Right. So that's some genetic shit right there. Yeah, some genetic. It's really something, and, and and so I get to fuel my bars and and my my um ideas through this um let's call it emptiness or this void, but I get to fill it with the ideas that I had about it. So yeah. that's one thing. Then um the lack of understanding from my stepdad's side, but the support is there. The the um, raising is there. The um, all of that, all of, all of that good. Like, okay, let's let's. Ra- I'm gonna raise kids that aren't mine, but I'm gonna do my best. All of that was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But you know, we get to teenage years, and you know, all hell broke loose, man. I mean, it was just straight up hate. Like, you know, what I'm saying he never said he hated me. I never said I hated him like to him, but you know, but it, it was went just down. There. It was like yeah, it was there. It was heads. like it was there. You know, and this is the period of getting slapped in the mouth and and you know, we we was getting our ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? I got my <laughs> ass whooped. Kids don't know how well they got it. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. So, so um, so I gotta give you one story. I had this neighbor named Mr. Fast. And I used to sing in the shower. I was scared to sing, and I would never sing for anybody like for you could say from five until 16 or 17. I didn't sing, I only sang for one cousin. I wouldn't sing for anybody. I, would, I wasn't singing solos, I wasn't in the choir. I was just why razor is, sharp. Why is that though? What, I just what? was scared, man, I just was nervous. I just, I don't know, I just couldn't sing for people, man. Right. But right. I could sing, but I was singing in the shower. Yeah, so Mr. Right. Fast used to hear me in the shower and he, he and my dad would meet like, like out on the sidewalk and smoking a cigarette and doing this. And, and then one day he told my dad, he's like, um, he's going to be something with that music. Like, he's, you know, something that my, my stepdad didn't even, he, it didn't really dawn on him. He, he he never thought, oh, I would be something. He heard it from him. Then he heard it from, I had a music teacher in high school. One day I went in there and I was just like, yo, I want to be an advanced choir. And she gave me this little test and she was like, you could be an advanced choir. And then a few months go by, then she reaches out to my parents and says, you know, I could really have a career like in classical music or in you know, as a tenor, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and wow. then, then my stepdad got like all serious, like you need to take this music seriously. You know, so it was always this um, no belief in me, then hear it from other people, then all the belief in me in the world. Yeah. There's so, extremes in that as well. Like they're not necessarily family, but people generally, it's like they, they're pessimists until a third party person says oh have you heard of yeah well hey well that's, i know him you know what i mean it's like it's that kind of it's that kind of thing isn't it yeah so i've i've held i've i've had bitterness about that for some time and then i, I was able to vent that through the music as well and then i got to a point where it's just like this is i mean um like lady gaga man born this way born this way <laughs> you, know what I'm you know what i mean like and i never thought like you know what i'm done with this like it's not even a there's no start of ending point to it, really. It's just I do it anytime, anywhere, and it it's no re, no no relying on inspiration. I do it anytime, anywhere. Period. Like you, oh, you want to make some music? Hell yeah, let's make some music. You know what I mean? Like so. Yo. So so that 
got me a scholarship to Manhattan School of Music. That got me to the Mozart Tim in Salzburg, Austria. Like this is all classical voice stuff. Wow. Then it got me a, like a private audition with uh, Grace Bunbury. She's like a famous opera singer. She says, "You, um, I want to introduce you to a person who could sponsor your career." You know, out of Lugano, Switzerland. And I was, oh. and then I told her, you know, I just want to focus on my own music. But I have reached the place where I, I can make a decision: Do I want to take a professional step to into the world of classical music? Because I had teachers saying, um, "If you." can do classical music, you can do anything. And if you don't do classical music first, you can never come back and do it. So it's like all of these, what you can and can't do. And you know, these are things that apply to other people. Like yeah, you can't yeah. tell somebody what they can and can't do. Like that's not music, music is freedom. Yeah. yeah, so fast forward, I start ghetto trance, I start my own shit and just start writing and writing and writing and writing. Boom, see KRS one on the street one day, in New York, a girl is with me. I had some spirituals music that she had met me to listen to. And I'm like, yo, there's Blastmaster KRS one. So I run up to him. This is down near the hit factory in the 50s. Yeah, can I just can I just add yeah. th- that was almost too casual. <laughs> oh, I just bumped in, yeah, I just bumped into KRS casual. Too casual. Oh. Didn't, di- didn't bump into him yet. Saw him from uh, across the across the street, like, okay. So I go up to him, I'm like, I'm the only DJ you need. He's like, oh, really? You know his voice. You know yeah, his voice. Yeah, oh, really? that again. You actually. He's like, it. well, and then my friend is like, actually, uh, actually, Mr. Mr. KRS, you need to hear him sing. And he's like, oh, really? And she put the headphones on him. He's listening. He's like, that's good. He's like, yo, can you come to the studio Thursday? Uh, G Simone is with him. She's like, da da da. He's like, no, nah, Cold Course Brothers is there Thursday. Can you come Friday? I'm like, yeah, what time? He's like, eight o'clock. I'm like, boom. So I go there at eight o'clock. Commissioner Gordon is in there. This guy named George Fontenet is in there. KRS doesn't get there till 2 a.m. Huh? So, you know, we just waiting. I'm yeah. wide awake. I never, I'm like, boom, he comes in. Are there any weed smokers in the house? And I say, he just sets out stuff, sets out these bags and da 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 da. And then he goes to the SB12 and then he makes this beat. And then I'm, I'm seeing him spit bars. And he does the MC. He does Word Perfect. And he does this song that's never been released. It's called uh, Open Your Mind, which I'm on. So I did three records with him. Open Your Mind? Oh, was oh. It? It's Open. called Open Your Mind, but it's never been released. I got it, but it's never been released. And then um, he does uh, Come to the Party. So I did those three records. They burned me like a... a, a, a a cassette tape like from the hit factory da, 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 da. and we like i'm like on cloud because this is literally like this was my favorite like you know and yeah. the, the craziest shit is that i wrote on a mind map in high school everything i wrote has come to pass man this no. is like in 88 or 89 absolutely everything that i wrote on this thing the teachers like write down in 10 years write this write that write this this is before we were all hip to mind mapping and and you know uh, yeah, I forget. There's all these different adjectives and words that people say now. You know, you know, positive thinking and all this type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The secret synergy bring things together. Yes. Be, it's just it's. It, but when it's in front of you and you know and you look back, you know, 10, 20 years later, you're like, damn, this really all played out. That's that's fucking bonkers. Because I went up in the attic and found that that um board, and then I looked at it and I just broke down crying because I was like, yo, all this shit came true. Mad. I toured with Harry Belafonte for 10 years. This is in, in the midst of that. Harry That's Belafonte, man. Crazy. Dude, had, he had he had New York auditions. Manhattan School of Music is like here. They they used to get things, they used to send it directly to me because they knew that I, I was basically I was the dude for it. And I would go to the audition and I was nailing all of them. So I, I had the audition, I had a second audition, a third audition. And at the time I had dreads like down to my waist. And I remember Harry like, do you plan to wear your hair like that? And I was like, yes. He's like, you have no intentions of cutting it. I'm like, no. He's oh like, God. Let, me, let me see. Let me see you tie it back. I tied it back. All right, let me see your profile. Turn to the side, turn to the side. He's like, all right. Um, da, 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 da. 
And then I had like a, we had a gig at Carnegie Hall, which was like a benefit concert. And they were going to say if we were going to get to do the tour based on that gig. Mm. Cause you know, it's one thing practice is one thing to say, Hey, we want, we, you can do it. And it's another thing, Showtime. Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm, yeah. So yeah. Showtime. And so after, so like within three days after that show, I get a itinerary for 2000, no, for a 1998 European tour. We were in Germany four months, man. Wow. During that time, this is just to let, you know, heads know, like during that time, this is 1998, four months on tour, Harry Belafonte. I made 50 racks, man. Jeez. I think I was 20. I mean, you know, yeah, 98, that's a, that's a sizable. F- it wasn't even no euro yet, bro. You, of course, of course. The euro didn't even exist yet. Damn. And the, and the, and the crazy thing, I found a 635 CSI in Halle, Germany, which I bought and had it shipped to New York. <laughs> and Harry was like, it's a beautiful car, but I hope you know you just bought yourself a headache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey, listen, they dropped oh, the science. And, and actually, and he was 100% right. But the thing is, <laughs> look, I got racially profiled so much in that car. I got like, Pulled over everything imaginable, man. What in the US and Germany or in the No, 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 no. Well, I shipped it back to New York. So in New York. Yeah. And by the way, I paid 8,000 Euro, I paid 8,000 Deutschmarks for it at the time. Jesus damn God. <laughs> and then when I had to bring it to US, I had to do all of this fixing. It ended up costing me 22,000. Because you, you've got all the different European parts. Yeah, that yeah. Did, did, did. But, I, but it still was, all the writing inside was still in German and everything. It was, it was just clean, midnight blue, coupe. It was crazy, man. Um, so, fast forward. Uh, I pick up a Sizzler CD. No, a friend of mine, we used to play, it's like, yo, Sizzler out here. So I'm like, yo, Sizzler's dope. And I pick up Preji Ja. Hmm. And on the back of it, it had exterminated, had fattest number, the phone number on the back. So I'm like, man, I got to call them. I got to call them. Harry and the, he had a, a, um, a label at the time with Chris Blackwell. So they wanted to sign me. They gave me a big contract. And I, I didn't end up signing with them, but I um, kept calling fattest. And one day he picked up and I'm like, man, I want to work with y'all. Da, 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 da. He's like, let me hear you sing something. I sang something over the phone. He's like, all right, it's going to cost you uh, five Gs. Come here and yeah, we'll work. So I was married at the time. My ex-wife loans me the five Gs. Uh Oh, actually, I I said this to Harry Belafonte and them. They were like, nah, we don't know them. They're they're gangsters out there. Da 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 da. Nah, nah, nah. We're not giving you any money to do that. Oh, so you actually went to the, before going to the missus, you went to to, yes. Right. And so then it's like, okay, so I'm not going to, I ain't going to be able to actually go on the, at this particular time. So she loans me this money. So I go to Jamaica and I get there and I'm waiting. Somebody picks me up at the airport, takes me to this house. I see some guys like chilling under this tree by a trampoline. Nobody's saying nothing. Then the drag comes out. It's like, you want some weed? I was like, yeah, that could be nice. <laughs> he has me like a basketball of just the sticky, icky, icky. <gasps> like this much. <laughs> and I'm like, you have Whistler? I'm like, nah. He's like, shh, shh. You have lighter? I was like, nah. Man, you're a joker smoker, man. Da, 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 da. Anyway, give me a lighter. Mm. So I'm sitting over there. Two hours go by. Finally said, the king will hear you. Go over to the tree. He's like, let me hear you sing something. I know you sang over the phone, but let me hear you sing something. Sang, I think I sang like a Donny Hathaway joint or something. He was mm-hmm. like, all right, seven o'clock in the morning, we pick you up. Uh, and then they take me to this hotel. They had a room for me. I go there. Set my alarm. I get up, 6.30, you know, get ready, da, 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 7 a.m., looking out, nothing, 8 Nothing. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 1, 1 30. Dread pulls up. Yeah, man, you ready to go to the studio? Then we drive to Montego. We drive to 
uh, um, his name is, uh, what's the name of this? Um, John. Oh, <laughs> anyway, this studio is in, in Montego Bay. Um, and it's, it was under K, K-12 and uh, G Street. Okay. G Street Studios. Right, right, right. G double E, G Street. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we go there and then uh, he's like, yeah. And, I, and I'm in there with Prince Malachi. I'm in mm-hmm. there with Murphy. I'm in there with uh, Chris Meredith, Basie. He plays with. Ziggy Marley, he, he played the bass line on Shook One, on Lost Ones for Lauryn Hill. How is it you get yourself, you literally just drop into these crazy, crazy environments Dude. and surroundings, bro? Dude, it's, 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 it's super crazy. So I'm there and we're just recording, 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 recording. And this is where my work ethic changed. I knew I had a good work ethic, but then as long as you want to work when you're in the environment in Jamaica with the musicians, they ain't nobody gonna stop like hey lunch or not. We just kept going, bam, 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 bam. One day, two day, three day. No food, man. Whole bunch wow. of weed. There's some fruit plates show up. And we had a lot of water, so basically, I had a weed, fruit, and water fast for like three days. Then Fatis shows up, and at this point, we all sit. Well, me and the two, a uh, couple people, were, like sick of each other, and then they started like doing their own stuff, trying or trying to do their own stuff say, on my studio time, right? Yeah. And I noticed it. At first, I was like, oh, yeah. It's like, oh, that track is dope. Yeah, mine, this for something else. I was like, oh, okay. One track, two, three, four, five, six. I'm like, dude, what, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? And then and then, then I was like, okay, motherfuckers think it's a joke or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then I started feeling this some type of way. And I'm like, Yo, I'm about to go outside somebody's head and be like, yeah, I, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm here alone, but I don't, you know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Um, when Fatis shows up, I go up to him, I'm like, listen, man, yo, da 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 da. Mm. And I'm like, and he's like, yo, you you need some weed? You want some weed? Um, what, um, why, what, you, you tripping, man? Why you tripping? Like, I'm like, nah, man, da da da. So he goes and talks to them. He's like, all right. He's like, hey, did you have the money, you know, that we talked about? I was like, yeah, I got the money. He's like, all right, you know, let's go around back. And then he's like, hey, you know, don't say nothing to them about, about this. So I'm like, dude, come on, man. Like, I, I've talked to you. I'm giving it to you. I ain't going to go there and tell them. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, I just wanted to let you know that I gave him the money. And so three, four more days. And over those, over that week, I, prob- I probably recorded like 20 tracks, man. Wow. They That's brought Sly Dunbar in and produced like four tracks. <sighs> They brought Chinna Smith in and did like uh, two or three tracks. I went to Barris Hammond's house. Marsha Griffiths came to the studio. What? Uh, Leroy Sibbles, like um, all like a whole bunch of people, man. I met like, and at the same time, Turbulence was trying was basically trying to get into the studio. Shazadek was trying to get in. Uh, yeah. This and is so crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, and then I met Sizzler because he was like sort of off limits from this whole thing, even though it was on the strength of his CD that I even reached out. So, so then they punched my vocals out of this one track that I produced. And I, and they also gave me free rent. I was producing like a month. So of those 20 tracks, I produced about 10 of them. Uh. Okay. Um, together with Prince Malachi and 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 and, and Glenn Ricks and um, and Murphy and it's just, we just had a great time. Minus wow. that little that drama I told you. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so you know, they will have tracks. You know, they don't have a hundred people on the same track. So they play in my track. They punch my vocals out. Sizzler comes in. He's like that one. So he does his thing on that track. Many, many months, maybe even a year or so goes by. And they actually credited me with the drums. It's on Bobo Ashanti, a song called Courage. And like, um, at first, Sizzler, he wasn't like super nice to me. But then he, over time, he's like, yeah, my diligence, diligence. Like, and uh, it's just crazy, man. I had a friend, wow. shout out Billy Noah. He's in, he's in, he's in, he's in uh, uh, Michigan, uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. He was a diehard 
MVP. Like, you swear he's Jamaican. Plays bass. He's crazy. What? One day he's like, yo, you went to Jamaica. I bullshit you not, man. I don't even like really like saying this, but I got to say it. He said, you went to Jamaica. And Sizzler was never singing falsetto or doing any of his own backgrounds until you went there and did that work. And y'all directly, you know, helped each other to a next sort of phase in style. That's and I remember, mad. yo, my sister came a second week and uh, the, I'm in, I'm in, now I'm in, in uh, Gussie Clark studio and all of a sudden they're like, yeah, my sizzler's coming soon. Judgment Yard. We got to hurry up and finish up rough mix, get this done. You know, they come in. So, you know, they basically gave me free reign. Mm. It was really crazy, man. I was in like, you know, so. Wow. The five G's like, it was like. For what I did, I, I got, I, I, it was cheap. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you maxed it out as well. I quadruple maxed it out. And then yeah. the next 20 trips, they flew me out there. How about that? So I filled up a passport in two years, going back and forth, over two years, going back and forth to Jamaica almost every second week, man. Sometimes you've got to force, your, force yourself in a situation that even you can't believe, you know, bordering on foolish and crazy and all those things that would make most people hesitant to do it. Sometimes you just got to just go and... It's so, I bet you there were even times during this process where you had this kind of a combination of imposter syndrome meets um, uh, doubt of the whole thing saying, what am I doing here? I just see it through, keep going. And, and, you know, even when the 20 hours of nonstop working and and you're hungry and you're fatigued and you're high, (laughs) you know, there must have been loads of emotions running through that whole time, but you just saw it out, you... And look what happened. Crazy. It's, it was very crazy. And rest in peace, Fatis, as well. And big up huh. the, the Burrell family. Rest in peace, yeah. And like, um, but they changed my work ethic. They changed my idea about going in the studio and building with people. And then here's the crazy thing. Every time a studio session, it would be about 15, 20 Jamaican musicians or Jamaican hopefuls, they they can't wait to sing for Fatis or uh, give him a tune that they wrote or drop some or chat or do something. Mm. So they would all be in the main room with the board singing little bits of line, this little bits of line, that little bit. Of, and if you in there writing, you will be influenced by something that somebody does. Really? And if you do, if you, if you nibble a little piece of that, they know. And they say, yeah, man, you think say, I think I get some little publishing off of, you know, the ear you say, you know, I man, and you take your voice up a certain way. I know man, you just hear I man do that. And you know, it was really so I used to go into the recording booth and have the music in headphones and write or or come up with my stuff in there away from them because I wasn't trying to hear that shit. You feel me? Just in wow. a sense of like, yeah, it's it's great. And so then they would get my creativity so they could say, okay. Yeah, he's not one of us, and I and I totally felt impost like like uh, imposter syndrome, man. Like, not the other one because I would I would like I was ready to kick some ass a few times. Yeah, but it was always worth it to like be there because like this again. I wasn't thinking about it when I was there, but this was on that mind map, man. Yeah. Let me tell you what I had on the mind map. I had I had Boogie Down Productions on the mind map. I had a BMW on, not a 635 CSI, just a BMW. I had reggae on the mind map. I had uh, just just that right there is everything when I just told you. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Already ma- that, that's the mind map into reality. From, from 89, from 1989. So you're going to go a decade later. Wow. And, and all of it is true. Tony, to a lot of people... What you're talking about here is seem it's it's in, it's extremely intuitive. It's it's brave. It's it's confidence in knowing what who you are, your skill set and the talent you have to a lot of people. And it mostly, you know, in fairness, you know, a, a world of different people 
ch- tune in and watch the podcast. To a lot of people, that's that, that's actually where where does where does the where do the hooks lie in this journey that you've had in your life that that you know when when are you placing your bets when are you like yeah I'm doing it right now like it, the opportunities don't always knock for everyone so for a lot of people it's like yo what's what's in your, what's in your breakfast man like what how how do you think that way how does this how does this fall into a plan from paper to reality well doing the mind map it was foreign to us when the teacher asked us to do it but she knew what she was doing but we hadn't we just did it it was a homework assignment but my mother's an artist a fine artist so yeah. i like artistic things so it was like you know i put like full art into it it's for, let us please pray and hope that that mind map is that she could take a picture of it. I'm telling you, you know, like, um, and, and I had no idea of any, of any of it, man. I like BMWs from, from, uh, it was either not, no, no, not landing or, or Spencer for hire. Or you said nuts the, landing. No, nuts that landing or some shit. Somebody had a BMW. Somebody had a 635 CSI. Oh my God. Somebody had that shit. And it just stuck it. It just burned itself in my mind like that car. And it used to just be like so, you know, <laughs> German engineering out the out this you know what I mean? So like uh so I think it's nuances is like say, how is this crazy job? Dope ass CD. Yeah. How is this so dope? How is this guy doing this? Like I heard all like a lot of reggae before that, mm. and then I'm hearing this for the first time, and maybe I was even a year late hearing it, but it still was fly, and it's still fly. Yeah. And like, and then how is a phone number on the back of it? Yeah, that's just that's what is focused. that number doing? Like, is that number there? Why is that number there if I ain't supposed to call it? Yeah. So it's moving me this way. And then that is definite. He was like, I want to let you know, Anthony, my phone rings all the time. I may never pick it up. Wow. But for whatever reason, I pick it up and here we are. So this is something very, you know, this is not like normal because my phone rings all the time. That's crazy. This is a combination of your curiosity and just a total... Blind faith. Blind faith. And I, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I get, I mean, I, I feel like I'm born persistent with certain things, but like, dude, I blew the phone up, man. Like, I'm, <laughs> like, like, maybe, like, and even that call probably was like a hundred, a hundred dollars, man. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like, no answering, right? You know, because it was on the cell phone. I called him on the cell phone. And oh, shit. Cell phone okay. rates wasn't, they was crazy at the Yeah, at back that then. Time. Like long distance and roaming and all like it was crazy. Again, but, again, that that shit was real back then, very much so. And then I just flash back a little bit. Ex wife, I didn't ask her for the money. She just saw that I was I was trying to get this to happen. The label wasn't going to do it, and she was like, you know, I'm, I will I will loan you the money. You know, I will give I will loan you the money. Da, 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 da. What do you think? It took what- me along. What would it was just kind of? I went, I went off as you were saying it in, in my head, and I was like, "Do because you, you mentioned your your stepdad and his kind of more pessimistic, um, uh, you know, not so confident attitude towards the things you do." Um, your mum was clearly a creative, so so there was obviously, a, you know, hey, what's the diff? Of course, be creative, go and do it. I'm sure there was a lot of that kind of spurring along because. You know, from a creative point of view, you've got to be free minded to be wanting to do do it in the first place. Then your ex wife and things like that. You're a very infectious person, Tony. It's like, do is it that? Do you feed off of certain characters that are around you, that that some don't spur you on, some do spur you on, some are can be seen as hurdles, and but it doesn't seem to me like anything stands in your way. Well, if I feel like somebody is trying to stand in my way, that's where like the spirit, like from playing American football, it's like, can't no, ain't nobody, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, but I don't, I don't, not, not physically, it's just like. Mentally. This is nothing. Yeah. 
you know, and I just, just sort of let that go. And I just turn up in my own way. Not, uh, not, not like I never really felt like proving wrong. I more felt like show and prove. Yeah, that's right. That's the hip hop mentality though, bro. Exactly. And that is, I think that single philosophy is the strongest element that hip hop has ever produced. Because they don't say prove and show, they say show and prove. And they don't never stop. Even once you like a multi-platinum artist, like it's, yeah, show and prove, baby, show and prove. Ooh, it's like it never, ever. And this is what I think um, a lot of people, like I even get, sometimes you like, yo, people ain't hearing me or this. Like, you know, even lately I've been feeling like, I know that 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 the album that's coming or that my my hip hop effort is authentic in the sense that people have been telling me to rap for 20 years, but you don't rap because you can. You know what I'm saying? You rap because you have to. You understand what I'm saying? Like when Sean Price died, yeah. I felt like, okay, I have to rap now. I know what you mean, because um like uh there's a term I heard recently, um, cheap to enter. Cheap to enter is the initial go at rapping, and it's the same as graffiti. It's the same as break dancing. It's like you kind of work with what you're given, and nothing costs like a guitar would or anything. These are things that are either stolen, as in spray paint, or they're what's in your inner ability, like emceeing or break dancing. So I know what you mean by you, because your skill set is so vast as a vocalist. It's like, well, why would I? Why would I just rap? But then. I mean, we're getting to the album for sure, but but you know what I'm saying. I, I can appreciate your what you're saying in 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 that context that that there's rappers that do the rap. You know, I, I'm coming with something a little more flavorful and out there and commercial and and you know, and no one's doing it. I get you. Then back to my stepdad, and I don't. I'm not demonizing him because he's a great man, and that's like you know what I'm saying like uh, like I took I have total like. Um, respect and honor for, for 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 my pops, like so, like. But he has said, and he might still say, rapping is for a nigga who can't sing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, long, so, so I'm like, okay, this is total disregard for the actual art form and yeah. or uh, the vocabulary or whatever, or the opportunity to, to create a new vocabulary exactly. or any, any of it. So, you know, and then I sort of say, you know what? We we got some generational fear here uh-huh. where it's like, this is this is out of my control. So I actually let it go. I had got corralled one time for something I had written, some bars I had written that was filled with curse words. And he was like, you know, cursing is for somebody who doesn't have the uh, vocabulary to not curse. And it's like, no, cursing is because the power in the curse word is the most, um, is the most, gets rid of the most toxins from your body just through that word. That's right. That's right. It's the most, liber- it's the most liberating thing. It's like, you know. That's cold you just said that. I'm like, yeah, of course it is. You know what I mean? It's an because- expeller toxins. It's like all the vocabulary you could possibly say in one just does it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it can be raunchy. It can be anything. But then when you finish saying it, you know, your teeth is like 100 percent white. They say, did you go to the thing? Like, what happened? Be like, yo, no, nah, I just said <laughs> you know, I just said all type of motherfuckers and everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like, just went you know in. I mean? like, it's just like it's like, you know, it's 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 crazy. And then. Um, then when you when you stay on it. And the person sees that. Nothing's going to happen here. Sometimes a little bit gets to them and they're like, you actually can rap. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, but yeah. it's, it's man, it's like, these are the, these are the, you know, some fights we fight and some it's just like, that's not even a fight to be fought. Like, yeah, yeah. You got to choose them carefully. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's not even, it's like. So there was a period, you know how when you send in certain people you love, everything you're doing, and they're like, nah, I like this. This is cool. I don't like that. that uh, they don't say yeah. stop sending it. But you know, it's like, then, there was a period where I just stopped sending everything, man. Like, I wasn't sending nothing, man. Like, you know, because I, I didn't need the opinion, nor, nor want it. Or I, w- I could have wanted it, 
but whatever. I was just like, let me just do me. And yeah, yeah you've lived a, you've lived a couple of lives already in a life, and you've 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 gone past the not caring. That's tough, but you know what I mean. I I get where you're coming from. You get you. I, I think you get to a um a vital a vital sign. It's like it's vital to do this. So this is this is the motivation. Like yeah, it's vital. That's right. right. It's vital. And this is what I'm gonna do. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's what you um, end, actually end up becoming, is what you are. That's the other thing. So um, and also given hit given rap as a genre, say it's it's like country music is a storytelling genre, rap is a storytelling, it's a, it's many things under the umbrella of rap and hip hop, but it's the only genre of its kind where you can do anything like whatever you can do. That's right. Period. Like that's right. It's, it's, it's like, it's the only one man. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so none, nothing of anything else that I do, I can apply it, but it does not apply. Yeah. This is something different. Yeah. You must've actually so, felt that transition pretty heavily. When I felt it heavily that. because, like, I always been an enthusiast. I always been about that, you know, hip hop life. I always been about that. But like I said, when Lauren Hill did Miseducation, yeah, people was telling me to rap then. Yeah, because they flip that. You flip. You would be flip, flip, flipping it from the opposite side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's like, like I said, you don't rap because you can. You rap because you have to. This is my opinion. Yes, yes, exactly. So you could put an age on it. And then you can make it ageless too. So the thing is, most of rap, people come through a crew. They get a torch passed to them by said by so and so. Buster Rhymes, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or Riz's next door neighbor's little cousin got bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, who was it? Um, Red Alert wasn't his cousin, his nephew. One of Jungle Brothers. I can't. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the list goes on. Like, yeah, yeah. The list real. goes on. But it's very, it's a lot of nepotism, but I don't mean in a negative way, but it's like, it's, it is a family affair in general. Yeah, that's right. So me as Tony Sauna, nobody did, nobody co-signed for me, man. And I know some heads too. People support, people give me respect. I, I, I feel that people... They have told like people that would say, man, just focus on singing. If they felt I couldn't rap, I feel that those people have not come at me like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you I, know I, I think saying? I think I know where this comes from. And um, uh, off the back of the success of what you've created up till now, I think the threat is very fucking real. And I don't like to think about that, but that's another side of it. And then, and then, the rap genre lends itself to to um, to being vicious. Yeah. This is why I'm I'm on some anti-testosterone shit. Like, yeah. and I'm, my bars are hard, but I'm not making this vein pop out on mm. some onyx shit, like trying to scare somebody into listening to me. So yeah, I I I on listening to Denise that for the album, listening to that, I almost I I I got sent I got sent your press release as well. And I, I very rarely do I do I check them. It's always the music first. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I just I just jumped jumped into the press release as, as I was listening to it, and I was like, I, you know, I just felt it in the music. It was like, yeah, this isn't. There's no ego here. There's no. Um, there's no. It feels like you you've got a, a real feminine side that that has a serious play to it. It's not like. You know, it ain't for fun. It's it. I don't know. It's just it for me. It was really refreshing because, you know, also the beats and the sound and the the the, the choices that you made on the on on the aesthetics. It felt really. Uh, it was going back to go forward. Do you know what I mean? Respect, man. I mean, there's been there's there's times in it, and it's been a process over. I mean, not that long, but long enough to say if something needed to be deleted, it would have been. Yeah. Or if, if a track needed to be, you know what I mean? Which mm-hmm. is okay. 
make it the best that you can make it. But yeah. that was exactly what I, uh, that was exactly the message of Denise. Mm -hmm. And like I said, and, and the thing is to have the history of the Cosby show, Lisa Bonet, young man, just pull up your pants, like America's dad telling us what, who we should be or how we should carry ourselves. And then he's in jail. The irony. And then it's like, <laughs> you were right. You are in fact right where you were telling us as young men we would be because our pants were sacked. That's incredible. That is just so and 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 as an album that is so well articulated, I think it's 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 a commentary. Yeah. It's a commentary and on then, the whole scenario. And then who is he to tell Lisa Bonet that she can't act in Angel Heart and do some voodoo sex shit in a movie? Yeah. When you doing it in reality, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, Mind is like, blown, bro. Like, That's fucking like, gold. <laughs> like, is it because you wouldn't be cast for such a role in a movie to play out a fantastic idea? So you're gonna do it in reality? Like, I don't like why. I see so, what it is, man. These motherfuckers, these people that preach, they have to be careful. You know, it, it's sometimes like. Isn't it Ellen De Degenerate? She's they she's she, at the end of every one of her shows. I think it's her. She says, you know, take care of yourselves, be nice to each other. Yeah, apparently she's like the most harshest, harshest of people. That that's that's alleged. But um, it's these sorts of characters that that yeah, I mean, they claim something, but they they, they go to the opposite. And it, it must I mean, be his, so I wanted my hypocrisy to be in the bar. Well, my I don't know. I want it. My hypocrisy is in the bars. My Oh, uh, um, insecurity. Oh, oh. I, I didn't hold. I don't for my rap shit. Not. I don't really hold. I don't hold back. Really. Okay. I might give less, but I don't hold back. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, so the thing is, um, in in rap, I'm saying everything, man. Which I'm you couldn't that. say on your vocal. Which you couldn't say on singing. You couldn't say on other people's records. This is this. This is that that thing that has probably been missing for a while in, in your psyche. And so, and so to, to take that, that story and it affected me. I've even done some paintings with like sagging pants and just different things. And like, they have made an ordinance in Florida. It's illegal to have sagging pants and all these different things. And, and like, um, young man, pull up your pants and, you know, and it's just like, Little dude, little dude woke up from his nap. This is my yeah. type. Yeah. Hey, we got Stowaway inside the podcast. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. his we name? His name is Matitia. Yes, Matitia. How are you? Can you can you hear me? Yeah, he can hear you. How he tight. just woke up though. He might not say nothing. He might not say nothing. But let me just finish, buddy. Okay. You wanna you wanna stay here with me or you wanna go with Jacqueline Grace? You wanna stay here with me? Okay. That's what I'm so, talking about. He knows when real is real, he wants to stick in the killer Keller podcast. Come on. <laughs> can you say can you say killer Keller? Can you say killer Keller? <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna say it, he's gonna say it all night long after yeah. like <laughs> so, so um so like I said, not holding back, saying it. And then here's the thing, I'm glad you brought up preachiness because this was one thing um I really, really, really did not want to be preachy because that was what gave KRS one like a 10 year hiatus. I saw people in the hood like that's right. They like KRS, but it's like, yo, he was preaching too much. He was just like, you can't teach everybody, man. Like it comes, you become a just, dad rather than a role model, right? You no, like and like, you know, but then, you know, like time goes by, like he's still like one of my favorites and everything like that. But like um I watched in the hood, I say. And I even saw, okay, yeah, his messaging changed dramatically in the sense of it's not speaking to me because he's he's like talking to me in another way. So yeah. I didn't consciously think about it. I just want to say things and I want to make sense, but I don't want to make 
uh, I don't want to make like you don't want to be on a soapbox about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Wait that to was shoot you down, kind of. Yeah, that was that was that was that's like my thing. Like, um, if I should ever be called out for that, I will thank whoever will call me out for that because I don't want to be that. I get what you're saying. So, in the same context of the way I depicted it with like Ellen or someone, you it could be role reversal. And what you're saying is, it could be perceived the other way because the moment you start. Re reacting to something that's almost a conscience call and you don't want to be deemed as a preacher. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah, I agree. And I don't want my bars to be like, you should or this or that or this or that. Yeah, I feel you. I feel exactly what you mean. And even me by saying it and mentioning it about Elena, you know, that puts me in a firing line as well. And there is a real fine line to that because when you are actually, when you are actually making music that is coming from the heart, is honest, you know, let's go back to like even even some so far as like some of the old blues guys and jazz and punk, you know, John Lydon, all these people, they they have these chips on their shoulders and sometimes you've got to say to yourself, why have you got a chip on your shoulder? <laughs> 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 what have you what are we really talking about here? You know? And then so so you gotta have a bag of chips on your shoulder. Yeah. You gotta have yeah, a bag yeah. of chips. You gotta have a bag of chips. Like, don't just be having a chip. On yeah, you might as well just go for it. Just chuck the but, but like um I really started learning more about the genre. As a pra as, as like participating in it. And that's another thing. Um, I'm happy to not be no spring chicken like that. But okay. at the same time, if you talk about ageism in in life, you know, rap is considered like a young man's sport, and that's some that's some bullshit, man. Yep. You know what I mean? Now, if you don't, if if your bars sound like, you know, your Fred Sanford then maybe your demographic is going to be older or something. But like, this is the, this is like the industry saying these people are stupid enough to buy this music from this 18 or 19 year old and we can make billions. And so we're going to keep that picture in front or whatever it is. Yeah. All I'm saying is this dude in Poland didn't really speak that much English. He was like, Tony, you either got bars or you don't got bars. Simple, <laughs> simple mathematics. And he, like, yeah. and he was like, bars is bars. Yeah. And I was like, there it is. I love it. I love it when you go to another country and someone, and perhaps there's a, a, a slight um, loss of translation, but they break things down to the simplest, like <laughs> simplest phrasing bars or words. Bars. And it just says it all. And you're just like, man, we, we, we talk it in tongues too much. It's true. It doesn't matter. You just got to be good. Be good. And be about that life. Like, it don't, it, 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 you don't got to be a gangster. You don't got to be a party, party, party. Or you, you just be about that life. It's so, like, anyone it could, who could put the, a, a flow together, it don't even have to rhyme. You put a flow together. It's about that life. Mm. Have some illness, some ill beats, or some, some sort of, whatever, or even acapella. And you can put it, you can put that, you can put it down. I guess. Yeah. And somebody's going to be like, yo, that's about that life. Cause it's about that life. Well, I jumped in at the top and I, you know, I just was just like, yo, this is an MC. This is it. And I didn't even, I didn't even for a second play any mind. And that, that's just testament to, you know, your, your theory practice and work ethic, bro. Like I, I can't give it any more higher praise. And I think once you are about that life and, and, um, and in fact, as you were talking about acapellas and stuff, I, I went back to those days where there used to be the hip hop instrumental and then they'd throw a female or male um, vocal acapella over top of it. And how charming that really was. And, and then, and then my mind went into zones of, well, that's because hip hop is about about it. It's all about it. It's it's all these kind of um, quote unquote new age things that are going on in music and technology now. It all derives from hip hop. It all derives from MC and DJing and all the things that were fundamental in the beginning of of hip hop in, in on the East Coast. It's so how can it be? It's timeless. It's all timeless, man. It's. It's timeless, 
and it's time sensitive for the person who is vital to do it. And then it's like worth that time. Yeah. So I, I feel like, man, dude, I feel like this couldn't have been a better thing to ask for, receive, and like have under some six degrees of separation. <laughs> and then right, it open right. up, and then it open up the two like mad heads. You feel me? Yeah, I'm telling it's crazy, you. Crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I love it's it when crazy. this shit happens. Um, it, it mildly frustrating because it's like, yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, this this happened at the right time using Zoom. It was the way it was. But then I think to myself, man, it's the separation bit that just blows me. Like, imagine how many, you know, particularly at a time when I was touring and getting around and doing the beatbox thing with all these different people. How many times do you reckon we would have been literally just crossing over the gig before the gig? <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, you, you, you probably was here in Stockholm on some, we probably was in the same place at the same time even, man. Like, I don't think it's something. Man. Talking to you is like you, 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 you're a personable, you're a charismatic dude, man. You got, hey. you know, you got, you know, even off record, you was like, you was already like, you, it wasn't no like on or off switch. Like that's you, Killer Kayla, be killing them. Oh, like, oh, I feel you, bro. I feel you, brother. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it because you know on first meetings, you know, and again, like this ain't gonna be a, yo. When we open up, we're in. You know, we're gonna do this properly. Beautiful percent. and beast boxing, man. I, I gotta, I gotta correct you, man, because you are a beast, bro. Like, <laughs> it's like you don't even beatbox, man. You a beast box, man. Like Woo! you're a beast boxer, man. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to do some tracks and shit, then. Though. We'll I would love that, man. Please. But so, look, when's the date? When's the date of the release? We, we, we're gonna it's have to July ninth. July ninth. Yeah. So the single's out now. Yo, King James. That's which one you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you, <laughs> yo, are you excited or what? Is this the, you know, what's yeah. what's been the response so far? Well, LeBron James ain't said nothing back. That's my second cousin. I don't know if you knew that. What? Because I'm from Akron, Ohio, originally. I didn't even say that. Like I'm tripping right now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, LeBron James, his grandmother is my aunt. So my biological father, that's his, his LeBron James' grandmother. Is my dad's sister. I, you know what? I I can't deal with you this morning. This is too much information. And we never met. Me and LeBron never met. Like I'm, I, like he was eleven when I left Akron. How is it that? Um. So, but he knows, right? He knows you guys. Are um. Not- I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He knows my brother. They went to St. Vincent, St. Mary together. But uh, he will know. Yeah, and we'll see. We'll see what happens when he finds out. But my mind is absolutely blown. This is going to be one hell of a podcast. <laughs> so check this out. Check this out. King James. OK, my stepdad. Yeah. Yeah. His brother is Akron's like first King James. Like he was like really in the in the uh, on the other side of the of the spectrum, you know, back in the day. So they called him King James. You know, he had a, a, a chimpanzee before Michael Jackson and all that. What? They wanted to they wanted to use his car for Superfly. Real talk. Damn. But this is not my blood, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but now LeBron, who is my blood, they, they're calling him King James, right? So I say cousin is famous. You know what his name is. Call him King James, but his Bible is blameless, right? Wow. So. That's what that's that's what that hook is about. Wow. I'm not I'm not going into specifics about him in the song or my uncle, but that's this is just where that idea came from. There's there's some crazy, crazy inherited genes going on in this creative world of yours, brother. Honestly. Thank you, bro. Ditto. Mad, mad. Well, I hope I'm all I'm thinking now. I'm thinking is like, yeah, what if you what if you get a call off the off the back of the podcast? Yeah, you're just like calling it how you know it. I mean, you know, like I had people from my hometown writing me, yo, LeBron is looking for artists and doing this and doing that. And and every so often I would see him make a post and I would put something of mine in there. But I mean, with the with the other million of 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 comments. Right. But 
you know, it's just like the, all of the seeds are there. His mom knows my sister. They went to high school together as well. You know, everybody in the family, I shouldn't say everybody in the family, but enough family members have have been in the line that, you know, can you hook me up? LeBron? I haven't asked if I haven't, you know, he knows all of the artists. I saw him, no, I saw him post, man, I, I'm so much in need of a Kendrick Lamar album right now. I miss Kendrick Lamar. I miss Kendrick Lamar too, but you know what? Check out Tony Sona. I'll put that in there. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because I tell you, man, that's, that is a great com- comparable to just the authenticity and the, the, the influences. Oh my God. So when LeBron finally gets to get an earful of my music, he will know, I could almost say uh, almost 100% of what I'm going to be talking about, especially when it comes to... Can you put the plug into the piano? I will put the plug into the piano. I'm going to type this. Just a second. I'm going to do it in just a second, buddy. Okay? I don't know. I have to find it first. <laughs> like, it's the, it's the plug. Tony, I don't man, know. Listen, the composer's ready for you, bro. Like, you yeah, can't be letting them hang around, man. Yeah, yeah, got, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to hold up his, hour here, bro. <laughs> I don't want to hold up his, artist, uh, his artistic, you know what I'm saying? He got, the, he got the fire right now. So when he hears it, like, he's going to um, understand so much of it from the storytelling part of it from the street names that I'm dropping from different things. I'm saying he has yeah. an international lifestyle. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be very different than any hip hop he ever heard. So that's all that, it, that's, that's just, it is what it is. You I know, and I, I just I, feel I, like, bro, I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, yeah, I you feel know. like you're on a journey. I think, I think the journey's the album's fire. The concepts is real. And it's just for me, it's just like, yo, I'm so pleased I've met you now. The journey's just beginning, bro. It's just beginning, and 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 uh, I could I can't think of a better uh, introductory to you, to your audience, to I mean, you are a gifted person, man. Oh, thank and you. I, and and you you're a gifted person, man. Thank like you, they man. like like you you got it like you. What you do cannot be taught, man. You feel me? Like you could go to communication school, whatever, whatever. But what you're doing, it can't be taught. I massively value that. I really appreciate that coming from you. But just the legacy that you hold and the fact that we're always recognizing real. I really appreciate it. Ditto, man. Dittos. My guy, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know, Tony Sawyer's inside the place. A man with so much history. Honestly, he could rewrite books here and everywhere. He's got a composer waiting, being paid by the minutes. So, so we got to go and let him do some keyboard connecting. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me, my brother. You oh, absolutely man. smashed it. So thank you. Thank you. And then uh, mind map picture and uh, yes. You know it, my guy. You know it. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, Killer Kayla. Real respect, man. Oh my guy, my guy. And it's gonna be crazy in person too, man. In person, well, gonna we're gonna just gonna make it happen. We're just gonna make it happen. I'm gonna get a gig over there. We're gonna get some tour and get some anything. Let's get something popping, man. This is this 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 is this is too rich, too rich a uh, uh, connection, man. Too rich conversations. Word. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Kayla podcast. I like it was our fashion, my guy. Tony saw this on the place. We are like that. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace, bro.